ここね Deep in the basement floor elevator hall of the Tokyo government office building lies an inconspicuous door, apparently for maintenance use. Ah, この奥にあいつが眠るラボがある。こう、我々はそう呼んでいるがな。The core, the deepest depths of Code's headquarters, secured with biometrics recognition to restrict access to all but a select few staff members. Enla turns the knob while pushing it. Two turns to the right, four to the left, two more to the right. Fingerprints, okay. Voice print, okay. Layer after layer of security is undone using Enla's own biometric data. Brainwaves, okay. Unlock. The door makes a clang as it unlocks. Just then, Enla is suddenly blown back from the door. Anu and I, and even he, jump away from the door in surprise. Out from the doorway appear three familiar crystal balls, the exabyte crystals imprisoning criminals' members. The crystal balls shine with a radiance that forces me to close my eyes. And when I open them again, there stand criminals' members, Equus, L, and Magdalene. The crystal balls are now empty. <laughs> Thinking they've come to help, I bring myself a step closer to greet them. And stop, because three guns greet me back. <laughs> Why would my friends at Criminal try to stop me? Right as Enlil reaches for her sword and he his gun. Enlil and he bite their lips as they fall to their knees. Enlil's left leg and he's right leg ooze with blood and oil. They were shot. Elle's warped lips, Magdalene's pallid face. Beside them, Equus hesitantly holds his gun with his with wavering hands. Elle answers Anu's voice. But her sights remain trained on he. Likewise, Magdalene keeps her sights on Enlil. Anu steps forward but suddenly stops. No, not quite. She didn't stop. Someone's right arm is blocking her. <laughs> the one Anu is glaring at is the final member of the Great Triad, Ea. Who is that one? The one who resurrected Ea and everyone at Criminal as Shadow Knolls. If we, are a, if we are a disturbance, then there's no way that one refers to Mutsuki, which means it's someone who doesn't want Mutsuki to be released, meaning... 
私たちもあなたたちもキーとなるあのポイントへ行かなくてはならないでも目的は微妙に違う気づきましたかさすがはアヌさんですねムツキは渡さないわよそれはこちらのセリフですわ何よ私に逆らう気アヌさんもヌルになれば私の気持ちがわかりますそりゃ不本意にそうなっちゃったあんたの気持ちだってわかんないわけじゃない Perhaps in sympathy for her friend felled by Enlil's sword, Anna's face darkens ever so slightly. But immediately afterwards, she shoots a strong, determined gaze at Ea. But... It's not going to be wrong! That's right. I'm going to kill you. That's our destiny! That's what I'm going to kill you. That's what I'm going to kill you. Ea pulls back strongly and gathers her strength as if to prepare a blow to keep Anu in check. But then. Lemchan whispers this into my ear. It's true that Equus's gun is pointed at me, but his aim isn't as sure as Magdalene's or L's. All of you? Does she mean me and my current comrades? Or. Equus's eyebrows push inward and upward as he points his gun. But his gun is still trembling. Lemchan's words and those psycholo physiological clues give me conviction. There's no way Equus can shoot me. I declare as I make a beeline for the door. Equus, what are you doing? Equus's bullets ricochet off the walls, ceiling, and floor, sending sparks roaring, soaring. But none of them hit me or my comrades. In fact, criminals' members have left, let their aim go loose, preventing Ea from attacking. <laughs> Striking at the opportunity, Enlil and he successfully knock the guns out of Els and Magdalene's hands. I thrust away Equus and reach for the door. In that very instant, I separate into Ishtar and Ar, Mayumi. This is. Yumi can hear Equus crying behind us as he drops his gun. Up ahead is a staircase spiraling up and down to infinity. And up above is a crimson eclipse. A familiar sight from somewhere. Enlo pushes he this way. She kicks L back down mid dash. Enlil declares this as she pushes He through the door. Well, by the time he gets through, He too has separated into He and Hinata kun. Unfortunately, that question is left unanswered, for the door had been shut from the other side, upon which not a sound, not even the sound of gunshots, could pass through. The world has already been reduced to nothing but the staircase, the eclipse, and us. Somebody's voices harmonize, and we start running down the spiral staircase.
How long has this been going on? What reason is there to be here? And what path led to this place? The spiral staircase below seems to descend into infinity. A spiral path descending into nothingness. A faintly shining, endless, yet confined world. In a circular segment of the sky, cut out by the double helix spiraling towards the heavens, a bleeding crimson moon cries out. A total lunar eclipse. Feels like it's always been a lunar eclipse, come to think of it. Bathed in its light stand a man and a woman. In bewilderment, the woman's eyes wander around the area. In silence, the man's feet descend down the stairs. In response to He's answer, Ishtar closes her eyes to strain her ears as she gently grasps the rosary at her chest. That was the action they would take whenever something troubled them. He nods strongly. He takes the lead and begins descending the stairs. Ishtar guards the back and follows after. As he runs, he glances at his wristwatch. 4.01 a.m. Huh. Yes, the boy mutters this voicelessly. In the skies above the boy lies a total lunar eclipse. The moon's age is displayed as 14.6, signifying a moon phase that supports the reality of the situation. The other man and woman are indeed bewildered as well. あの with that said, Hinata breaks off running. Ishtar looks back and immediately follows after him. The spiral staircase glows a faint bluish white in the moonlight, but the dark is deep, the end is unseen. At first, the stairs appear to be single layered, but in actuality, it's constructed as a double helix like two sides of a strand of DNA that will never cross unless a miracle were to occur. But he, she, know all of them embrace confidence in themselves and head straight down. The geometric patterns etched onto the wall systematically continue, never changing. The same can be said, the same can't be said of their footsteps, however. Listen to them and only them, and they almost sound like one. Like two. And finally, back to four. As if those sounds were an indicator of their pot potential possibilities. Another changing variable is the light source shining upon them. They're moving away from the crimson light and into the depths of darkness. Just how far down will they go? Are they headed for the right place? From time to time, they each look up to the sky as if to affirm their own existence. The moon's crimson coat remains ever unchanged. Out of belief in one possibility, or perhaps fear of another, they do not look at the time. The moon's age, however, marks the passage of time with cruel accuracy. They frown. Some even bring their hands to their temples. 
a migraine, it would seem. Suddenly, their pace slackens. Are they tired, or... Enveloping them is pitch darkness. Just how far does it spread? Despite their inability to see in the darkness, they still fumble forward. Their unreliable footsteps and the ticking of the moon's age symbolize the heartbeat of their existence. Throughout all the confusion, that device is the only thing that keeps moving with perfect mechanical accuracy. They run into something and stop. Standing before each of them, emanating a faint light. Eyes open wide, mouths scream, but no voices come out, as if vocal cords do not exist. Standing before them is a life-size mirror. They gaze on as if their entire bodies had become one single eye. Reflected in the mirror is... <laughs> 